What's going on, my creative collective? Welcome to your delayed <laughs> daily creative message for August 19th. Um, it is a day off and I worked late last night. So I was like, I want to give my body the gift of some sleep. And I got it. So let's dive in. All right. It's not a long weekend, but it feels like a long weekend. That's weird. It is just one of those things. Okay, so I'll read this one first. That looks a little mossy, eh? Hmm. Interesting. Or like green algae, maybe. Could be something to that. Not like blue-green algae. That stuff's bad. But like just, you know, the not as toxic algae. Anyway, I don't even know what I'm saying. So take flight is the one that we'll read in a minute. <clears throat> or 20 to 30, depending on the reading. Um, okay. So dear you, check in occasionally with yourself about your motives behind actions you plan on taking, especially when you have an end game in mind. Is the source of your motivation desire or entitlement? Maybe you're drawn to a certain path because you think it will bring you a feeling related to the outcome you seek, like safety or wholeness. Know that you will see a reflection in the outer world of the motive that drives you forward. Do you need a motive? Can you simply be pulled in the direction your soul calls you towards joy, discovery, growth, or adventure, participating in something compelling and meaningful without trying to define it? If you can step forward surrendered to whatever spirit has in store for you, you will be amazed at how things turn out. Check your motives, then hand them over to spirit. Everybody here wants the best for you. Life loves you more than you can know, or life loves you more than you know. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Let us do this, Spirit. What messages do you have for my daily creatives for August 19th, please? Messages for August 19th. That was, uh, that was a sad shuffle. <laughs> okay. Not that there's like a rating, like <laughs> there's like a panel of judges. These are my little stones, but they will be my panel of judges who hold up like <laughs> a 10 or whatever based on the shuffles. Oh my gosh. Anyways. Uh, I don't know if you knew this, but it, that's a train. It would just like everyone within a 10 mile radius to know. So we have death in the kind of beginning place, the call to adventure. But I feel more like it's like the rebirth. This feels more like a rebirth. Seven of Swords. Nine of Pentacles. Seven of Swords, Nine of Pentacles. Interesting. Huh. I'm kind of hearing like make do like there's something make do like what did you have to make do with because this is coming across as like make do energy um as in like oh I just you know I made do with what I had or I, the phrase is escaping me because I'm like information is just coming through but like you like there was you know you did what you could with what you had but you turned it into like it's like when you have like seven different leftovers in the fridge and then you end up turning it into something that feels like it should be on HGTV and you're like humble brag but and then you like start saying shit to everybody in the house like oh it's nothing but then like low-key you want people to compliment you like I don't know like there's like a cheekiness to it I don't know if that's like a little there's a little cheekiness to it but at the same time in a more serious sense I do feel like there's a sort of like making do with what you had seven of swords is typically rendered the sort of um dishonest energy um wow okay hmm. so we have the knight of cups and the two of swords I'm going to put that to the side here and then this is just an aside and I'm going to pull the rest of these energies. Oh, just super casually the sun. That's no big deal, right? <laughs> Sometimes tarot just makes me laugh. It really does because the decks do troll you or like they don't troll you, but they're like, hey, hey, like just, you know, like it's I feel like the energy is frisky today, which means I've got to catch up. Means I've got to catch up. I got my morning smoothie here, <laughs> um, but I have yet to like fully, fully and completely like get there in terms of awake. Nine of Swords is the challenge. Oh, but this one I forgot. 
Nine, four of cups. Interesting. Two of wands. Spirit, what messages do you have for August 19th for my daily creatives? High Priestess ending on the Ten of Pentacles. You gotta let your intuition lead the way, which is ridiculous, I know. Um, and it's not ridiculous, it's just like, I don't know, I've, I've been in a place where I'm like, intuition, guide me. And then I'm like, fucking crickets. <laughs> not because of... Um, not because of the there's it's there's not a lack of information coming in sometimes it's like there's too much and I almost wonder if that's what this energy represents um I feel like this was like a side story I think a little bit like that maybe this is the part where it's like maybe that's why this is coming up it's like where it's hard to hear right there might be something that's hard to hear or hard to see but not hard to see like this I think about that's so interesting thank you spirit <laughs> I don't because this card to me represents needing more information because there's either an abundance of choice that kind of makes you need to go within or there's not enough choice and it it's like you need to figure out a, a different way altogether so it's almost like there's something you can't really see but and it has to do with the heart center um which is fine like that. So I'm going to just set that as an aside here. And then I'm going to clarify after if needed be. Because I feel like there's this is the story. And then there's like sort of this like whoop whoop that's happening over here. And that's the official sound. It's very scientific. Um, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, the thing that could become a tower if it goes unchecked is this sun card here. Um, which tells me a little bit about... Um, I, I almost feel like your happiness might surprise you. Your joy might surprise you. And and like that could become a tower. This doesn't mean that it's like it could become something that like it's like not a Jenga tower that you hit at the bottom and the whole thing. It's not like that crashing sound. It's not like that. It's more so like it takes you aback. I think a little bit. It takes you aback. And the reason why is because this sort of creative delight, this creative like, oh my gosh, look, look at this. Look at this thing. It's so, And like you're just like so excited. Like you're like, oh my gosh this awareness, this creative consciousness and creative consciousness could mean regenerative consciousness. It could mean, you know, I'm thinking about regenerative planting. When I was in school, they were talking about a specific area in and around Cherry Beach in Toronto. It was from, um, or I should say Toronto because I'm from here. There's, we don't pronounce the, it's the silent T on the end. Um, but, but, um, uh, yeah, so the, we went there for one of my classes and um, we were writing about bodies of water and, and from a more environmental humanities perspective. But one of the things that um, one of the things that the prof talked about was regenerative planting and how it's specific areas in order to revive or revitalize a specific ecosystem, you do regenerative planting. They were talking about cormorants and how cormorants are birds that set up on specific, like around shorelines. I saw some in the Niagara Glen and their, their poop is so toxic that it actually destroys trees. Um, and it makes the soil highly acidic. And it actually is, it's a, it's not, it's not an invasive species per se, but they have to control in where they end up. And that's like with the ones that look like they, I don't even know, but anyway, so, um, all of this to say something about regenerative planting, like there's like regenerative planting and maybe that's where this feels like you had to make do, but what you didn't realize is that the making do was the regenerative planting, um, that sort of lends itself to this, the, the call of like who you are post transformation like who you not it's not even who you become because you've become and we're always and only ever becoming so it's not an end state but I feel <coughs> sorry I'm a little wheezy there um my asthma has been a little bit off and on um but I'm, I'm just getting that this energy here is um it's like who you are through and, and like see this is so fascinating to me because it's like navigating right navigating and there's no it's like feeling faceless to me represents um it's not an absence of identity it's not that it's it's sort of the absence of um well it is in a way but I'm seeing it as like this way that you moved because you were kind of shape-shifting in a in a positive like register as opposed to a slippery one like you're you're kind of changing shape and form and it's planting these seeds and it could your happiness might it's not that it's unrecognizable to you this is the antagonist position um I feel like in this equation it's not that your happiness is 
it's it's maybe it is in a little bit of a way like unrecognizable um because of um what you're used to there's no hierophant card to suggest tradition or anything like that but i do think that there's perhaps a way that uh, worry has played a factor here and that's what's maybe causing some noise right because like your heart speaks to you all the time in terms of like what do you want right like what is it that you what excites you like what what do you think about when you don't have to think about anything like you know whom where like what are how, how does your brain fill in the details when you don't have to think about anything when you don't have to be anywhere where does your mind wander right so I almost get this sense too like this is it's almost like this is like the empowered version of you some Scorpio energy empowered version of you and then this is like the same red like this disempowered and to me red represents like that Aries emperor energy of forward movement solid foundation groundedness um so I I get the impression that it's like there's these vacillations and I feel like the challenge is stepping into your power. The challenge is stepping into this rebirth energy for you. This, And again, regenerative is like loud, loud, loud. Um, and I think the best way is to just stay focused on what's coming, to stay focused on the future, not as a place that you're going to get to because that can then split your energy because you're so focused there that you're not here, right? So I think this is about recognizing where you are. And and I think this the three of wands tends to represent more eager anticipation. But I feel like this is you kind of <clears throat> when you're in a place of, of worry, when you're in a place of fear, the best thing to sometimes do to call that energy back in a more organized way, because it's where you start to give away your energy to things and it's not other people taking it. It's you giving it right because uh, when you're in a fearful state, you don't have the best boundaries. You don't have the best awareness. You don't have, like, you're not at your best because the fear is sort of fragmenting you. So what this does is it sort of pulls you back. This is almost like observer mode a little bit. Um, but it's also a, a planning mode, right? Like uh, getting <clears throat> getting into and, and, you know, utilizing some of the, like, the games in the Ask and It Is Given book by Abraham Hicks, right? Uh, at the back of the book they have all these like th they're little games right and it's like gamifying and making fun making making it fun um to to work with the law of attraction and, and all of that stuff and I think that's sort of like this call to pull back a little bit because that's where your intuition is speaking to you in those details so maybe there was a way that you were looking for it somewhere you couldn't find it and the overcoming is understanding that it's not in having the full picture it's in the planning stages because that's where all the fun is that's where all the fun is. But then that's also how you get to this Ten of Pentacles, right? That's also how you get to that sense of fulfillment. Because this is a wish fulfillment, yes. But this is a fulfillment that actively involves your participation. It is, and, and like all wishes do this, right? All miracles do this. But this energy in particular is a way that you're sort of pulling out of yourself. This, it's like this is an active solar plexus type of participation in your happiness even though this represents more root energy to me there's a way that this this feels like i feel it here when i think about the ten of pentacles i feel it here and in the heart center so it's like this this sort of chamber or this like pipeline Ugh, that feels weird to anyways um but it's like this sort of energetic stream that operates and and it's like in communication but that's where this how do I word this spirit? I, I almost feel like the, these sort of regenerative seeds become something so much more substantive, but you don't and you you don't know that or you can't know that or won't know that until another point in time. And that's where this Knight of Cups and the Two of Swords really comes into play because I think that there's a way that you're searching for details. Um, this is so interesting so every December my my dad's family <laughs> there's this like all of the family like descends upon this small town where most of them live but we all get together in this we rent a hall because we started to get like doing dishes at people's houses for like 50 people was a lot <laughs> so we just started renting a hall and everybody brings like a slow cooker full of food or whatever for you know we everybody takes a specific Christmas dish right so 
there's a game that I, I brought one year and it was it's it was called pin the nose on the snowman and for some reason that came up with this like it's almost like a lot of games like gamifying like that maybe there's just a need for more fun like turn it into a game right like if I'm in traffic and I'm frustrated by the traffic when I approach a traffic light I'll just start to like blow on it like I'm blowing wishes like <laughs> trying to make it go green and people around me probably think that I'm like you know, on another planet, which in many ways I am like, leave me alone. I'm in my spaceship. Piss off. I'm having a great time. <laughs> Keep your negativeness away. Right. So, but it's just like, there's like turning something into a fun thing that brings the flow. Like that's where I feel like this sort of, um, this, it's almost like energetic messengers that, that, that sort of reach you in that space. <clears throat> I'm just going to grab a little bit of this smoothie here. All right. Okay. Whoa, two of cups and the high priestess on the split. Mm -hmm. I'm going to keep that as an aside. That feels pretty significant. Thank you, spirit. Okay. The magician was like not wanting to shuffle in. So just keep in mind that was, but this was the one that was really prominent. <coughs> Spirit, what messages do you have for my daily creatives for August 19th? <laughs> the emperor. I knew I was feeling like I was feeling like it so much. Justice, red robes again. Look at that. Red robes and then totally naked. Okay, hold on. That feels significant also. Wow. This is so interesting to me. The energy of this. I heard the emperor's new robes. Weird. Oh my god. Okay. Hold on. Oh, my intuition's having a blast right now. So much clothing. Not, not that that's a bad... I'm not... Oh my god. Anyway. <laughs> Oh, sometimes I speak like shit just comes flying out and it's like, anyway, um, so this is really interesting to me. Um, cause I almost get like, if, cause I feel like clothing here represents an identity, right? Like this identity piece that we talked about here, like not being able to recognize something, an aspect of yourself. And it's not because you were externalizing it or projecting it, but there's just this aspect of yourself that's becoming more apparent to you. And it's and like, what is aspect? It could, it like, this could be as significant. I just, I, I don't necessarily like thinking in abstractions when it comes to this stuff. So I'm trying to like get it into a granularity so that it's applicable. Um, cause I can sound like philosophical and like, I have so much anyways, but it's when it, when we bring it into the everyday This could just be the way you show up somewhere, your energy, like the way you wear it, right? The way you wear your energy. Um, like people come into my work all the time and it's, it's a, you know, it's a public place. Like it's, I'm so excited when people come in. There are times though where I can read energy from folks and it's not bad or good. I don't pry. It's just, it's one of those things where when they enter the space, there's a, there's like recognitions of specific energy and how it's like, it goes into um, different kind of like buckets that make it easy for me to identify um, the energy itself and how to approach and like how to how to work with it right and again it's never in a way that's invasive because that's the very last thing that I want to do um, and sometimes too it's necessary because there's you know the kids running around at work and things like that so it's like being very mindful of the energy that comes in but I almost feel like this is like a way that you're 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 wearing your energy right um it's almost like you're stepping there's obviously a sense of stepping into your power here this is like sort of the i'm getting this is almost like a 5d version of that like the more spiritual spiritual and thus invisible to specific spectrums of logic right spectrums of logic of, of like the visible logic um that then gets translated into visible logic right this transformation and this is how you're becoming and there's it's almost like it it shifts into this sense and it's like, I see this is connected to the King of Pentacles with the green, but we'll get to that in a second. But it's like this sort of integration of value and worth. 
and integration as integrity. Like it's like you're energetically integrous. Not that you weren't before, but there's a way that there's like a bringing together of things because you were moving away from the idea that your happiness was something that would take. Like happiness isn't a taking thing. Happiness is a giving thing. True joy, true bliss multiplies, right? It is on the exponential side of things as opposed to the, um, you know, the negative side of things. And like you can have, maybe you can have negative exponents, negative exponential, ne negative exponentiality, perhaps, I don't know, I'd have to Google it. But anyways, I feel like that sort of, it's, it's almost like this value proposition where you had to move away in order to move into the nine of cups aspect of things and this could also just be where this is like eight nine and ten right like there was a way that this allowed you to move away from what looked to people like something that was perhaps emotionally fulfilling or a sort of um, emotional awareness and depth and then you went deeper and that's where it gets to the ten I, that's so thank you so much spirit that's I feel like that's where the ten of cups is coming from and interestingly the high priestess came out with the two of cups so again sort of seeing without seeing um and then it's like this again like i think of this nakedness right like there's like um but i feel like this is more spiritual and energetic right and i feel like it's just this blasting through and again we see the red this is so fascinating to me um sometimes i'm so freaking grateful to be able to do this you know what i'm saying like this is ugh, so good um but I feel like it's like you had to strip away pretense. You had to strip away the identities. You had to go into that place of being able to carry only your intuition, the water and emotion with you and not in cups, but in a way that would give to others because then it would allow you to see beyond the energy that you wear and interact with other people from the energy that you wear. Because then when you do that, you're able to see very clearly. Sometimes the clarity isn't fun it's sometimes really hard. Sometimes you have days where like I did this week, I, I literally just sat in bed and was like sad for a day. I granted there's like hormonal stuff there too, but it was just, it's like sinking into that as opposed to running from it really brings out that fulfillment, right? And, and it really gives you greater access to that instead of saying like, why is this happening to me? Just leaning into the sad, leaning into what it's telling you because it's communicating to you if you just let it be and stop asking it to be something it's not, right? And having gone through, you know, depressive episodes before, um, it wasn't something that was in that th thread. But this is also to say that um, there are ways that people experience depression in different ways. So if that is the case, that that doesn't resonate for you, that's nothing that speaks to nothing of um, how well you might be doing or not doing with depression. Like that's don't use that as your metric or feeling of cure, right? Um, try to avoid using that because um, it's it's not um, sometimes people look at, you know, um, as depression and things like that as things that we should, you know, run away from or things like that. And, and there's no real way to do it. And I'm just saying, have compassion with yourself. Right. Um, but I, I, coming back to this, um, I do feel a whole lot like, and I just see this thematic, like it's like the, the, this sort of harvest on the back of the, uh, on the backdrop behind the high priestess, this sort of harvest energy. And I see this sort of harvest energy in the robes on the King of Pentacles. But then I feel like there's this way of understanding yourself and interacting with the world where it sort of grounds the energy. Like it grounds this like, you know, I see the emperor on this mountaintop, right? Perched atop and with this very broad field of vision. And then, and you know, informed to the Ten of Pentacles and high priestess, right? Like you're way up there. And I feel like, because this is also, I feel like, aspirational perhaps. If not aspirational, then something that you're reaching towards. So there was a sense of it being maybe outside of you or away from you. And then this King of Pentacles energy is like a groundedness, right? We have the, it, It's clarifying the Nine of Pentacles and the Queen of Wands, which is like bringing this fire into a place of like, whoa, right? It's not just an idea. It's not just an idea that you have in terms of a wand. This is a whole way of being, that was sparked by this one thing and then this king of pentacles i think is this way of shifting your your perception of yourself or you know other people's perceptions of you um 
other people's perceptions of you, perhaps. And it's so fascinating to me because then it's like this sort of disenchantment with where, not disenchantment, that's not the right word, because disenchantment is akin to boredom in my mind. But the way I'm seeing this is not so much boredom as much as it is like not knowing how to integrate the energy, right? Not knowing how to integrate the energy because it's like, I feel like each cup has this like whole spectrum of vision and that much information taking that in I'm almost getting this as like downloads right like and not the quality and, and consistency of them but like the expanse of them because I've had moments where I just I have to stop and like I you know ha have to like I look around me and I'm like does anyone know how and not to be like I'm the only one experiencing the depth of this moment and I'm so special no 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 it's not like that it's like there will be times where I pull back and I I you know I look around me and I'm like does anyone know how many millions of impossibilities had to become possible for every single person and all of the cells in their body to be here and share space in this very moment, do we have an, a, 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 an appropriate sense of wonder at that, right? And that's like that sort of expanse. That's that's the expanse. Like last night I was laying in bed trying to fall asleep. And of course, I don't know where my brain thinks of this shit, but I was like, if there was a space junk storm that knocked out all of the power to everything and all of the satellite communication and we had no cell phones, how would we know what we look like if we couldn't take selfies how what would happen if instead of taking selfies we relied solely on the ways that other people described us to ourselves and then i thought to myself that's a little narcissistic like it was you know just thinking about how that could go and be twisted but then i was like what if that's all that we had like what if what if instead of things like selfies and and whatnot we just had people say you know like I really like the way that when you have this subtle idea or there's a subtle shift in your energy, something happens with your, with your eyes, like your eyes or something happens with your, your, your smile. There's like a dimple. There's like something like, you know what I mean? Like, what about those things? And you know, that's where it's like, that's so much information to take in at one time. Right. Um, people are like, why did you start taking melatonin because of that shit? <laughs> like I, my brain is always busy. And even when I ground the information, even when I ground the energy, it's still like overdrive, um, creatively. So, and I mean, it's a lot of interesting things, but it just, sometimes it feels vast, right? Like this almost represents, like, if you look at it, um, it almost looks like a whole, it almost looks like a whole cosmos, right? It almost looks like a whole cosmos in that that sort of stream it could be light codes something along those lines but um yeah it's like a field of vision like i think about this too in terms of like spectrums that animals and insects can they can see that we can't like some you know i think it's bees see it's either in like the uv spectrum so it's like they can't see specific things so you know and a fly landed on me the other day too while i was hiking and i was just sitting there you know taking in the scenery and a fly landed on me and i was like oh he's not moving he's tasting my arm because flies taste through their legs right they taste that's how they they know what a thing is so he just hung out there and I was like well I guess I taste okay <laughs> like you know but it was just that moment of that moment of um awe but that's where I feel like the four of cups can feel like disenchantment because there's so much information coming in that you don't know which to pay attention to or what to focus on and it's not a matter of a lack of focus it's not you know it's not scattered it's almost like there's so much light that it's like you you are trying to grasp it all and you can't ground it fast enough but I feel like there's a real process happening here where the emperor you know it's it's like grounding this energy into something really powerful it's grounding this into something really powerful and the hermit card here I think it's like it's almost like this once this like The color and texture ceases to matter when it meets with specific wisdom, right? I don't know. 
if you can see that. I have this tempered glass that's supposed to be like more secure and all this stuff. And like it, I can't see shit right now. So I have to dip my head. Um, but it's like the color and texture of of your identity matters less because there's I feel like there's wisdom coming in or on its way like I feel like you can feel it you can see it you might feel it like in a way that's worrisome because it's it feels like a really huge energy it feels huge by comparison to to how you conceive of yourself um but it's almost this like burning away of of pretense and and that's like the real hope and healing for you and, you know, hope and healing is so it's like the new thoughts and prayers. Like it's, is it helpful? Yeah, because it means that you're responding to something. But then how, how what does that mean in the everyday? Like, you know, my, my friend um, is just like, well, she's my best friend, but uh, and a lovely human being. But, you know, she was saying, oh, I noticed my neighbor, um, the, something seemed off. And, you know, she talked about how uh, the husband uh, of the couple across the street from where she lives passed away and you know what I think about when I think about everyday um, everyday representations of this it's like when we strip away pretense and you know she said well I, I'm gonna go over and talk to them and talk to the wife uh, because you know I just I, I want to make sure she's okay and all of that stuff but it's like in those moments where we don't know how uh, to do something but we just care and do it anyway and I feel like that's that's sort of like that's like a flash of that sort of vulnerability and that's what it feels like but it's like redefining how that that sort of cloak looks and cloak just in the sense of identity and energetic imprint if you will and it's sort of like changing the the style and shape of everything and the same thing with the high priestess is representative of that but I feel like there's something to be said here for the way this two of cups it's almost like the two of swords falls away and it's like the knight of cups and the two of cups and I, I, that's where the energy is just coming across as like reconnecting to center and, and, you know, if people are looking for relationships, this is definitely fortuitous of that, given the Ten of Pentacles, the Two of Cups, the High Priestess, the Hermit, uh, the Star card, like, we, and, you know, we have the Sun as well, the High Priestess twice, no less. So I, I do feel like that's there. So take that into consideration too, right? But this just this energy, I feel like it's more about you, like this hero's journey, right? Going through and integrating energy and, and working with it so that you then can take it and apply it to relationship. You can apply it to creative projects. You can apply it to work, however it is or is coming across. Oh, I'm sorry, baby girl. My cat is like right here. She's like, um, where's my backpack? Okay, sweetheart, come here. I know. Oh my gosh, this whole spread. <laughs> I am a sucker for this cat. Let me tell you. There you go. Okay, this is a little squished, but that's fine. We'll get there. Oh my gosh, I have sucker written all over me. I know. But like, look at this face. Look at that face. Like, how can you not? Anyway. Um, yeah, so I feel like there's, uh, to say there's a lot of energy being integrated is a really <laughs> big understatement. <clears throat> um, I'm just going to pull one very quickly from the notes from the universe on love and connection deck. Spirit, what messages do you have for my daily creators for August 19th? You needn't worry. Yeah, that knight of swords, right? That's the main challenge I think is just to overcome this. I think it's really to overcome this, this, this worry, right? It could also just be integrating your power, like, and, and not in terms of like, I have a superpower, <laughs> you might, but it's more so just integrating the power into your person, right? Like, it's like, what's that thing when your light body, um, it's like integrating the energy. Oh my gosh. I, ugh, words are failing me, but it's like where something changes in, and this could be changes with epigenetics as well. This could be shifts in that way. Um, you know, since taking tea, for example, my body's pH has changed. And, you know, beyond that, it's also just shifted the energy in me and different energy centers are more active than they were. And it's just so fascinating to me. So it's like something like that. And maybe it's like you're I'm th hearing this, the quote, there's like a quote about wineskins, like you can't put new wine into old wineskins because they'll burst. And I almost feel like there's like some templating. I don't I, I'm hesitant to say upgrading because it's so I feel like it's 
overused a bit, but I feel like there's a way that it's like your energy, your auric fields or your energy bodies are not realigning, but like reconfiguring. Like they got the system update or they're getting the system update. I surrender my desires and I know the universe has my back. That's the key to it all. It's super annoying too. It's a super annoying key. Let's be real here. Um, but that's where you may worry that like it's something isn't coming or you may worry that you may worry that there's maybe you worry the universe doesn't have your back. Right. And it's like that's where it's like this sort of stripping down of um, pretense and meaning is helping you to see that it does because then your back is exposed so then it's like the universe has something to work with because until you expose that and move outside of this sort of um, power structure in another way that this could show up in a way of you know like um, it's like justice finds you when you get into it's sort of like this this is such a weird thing okay so one of the things that I you know physical safety has been a concern for a while for me, like just with different things. So for me, it's such a tender thing for um, a partner to come up behind me and wrap their arms around me because it's like, that's such a, like, I don't like it when people sneak up on me, right? Like it's not, and it's not like jumpy, like I'm not necessarily jumpy. It's just, um, I feel people's energy before it arrives in front of me. So I, I just like to have that sort of ability to see, um, though my intuition guides me often, but it's just such a tender thing to have someone come up behind you. Like it just, it makes me melt. Like it's, it's just anyways, but that's where I, what I see in this, right? The universe has your back, but it's like you first have to expose that vulnerability or part of you. Um, and then, then it's like, that's how the universe goes it's just like this recognition right this energy of recognition um so let's read this here so this says take flight i don't even know how long this is so far oh yeah 36 that's fine um i mean like thank you so much for watching because i know this is a bit later today but dear you there is always more than one side to an argument two sides if not more to every story and hundreds of ways to be right be different be at odds and so on Today, we suggest that instead of looking for differences, you find a meeting place of agreement and approach this experience with understanding and compassion. Seek common ground to understand how another person thinks or how an alternate plan might be laid. Stay out of judgment too. Observe, discern, but accept that others have different stories, experiences, and journeys. And some people might refuse to remain open to another's point of view. No matter what, you've been presented with a great opportunity to explore a new way of doing things once common ground is reached. You're attracting people and situations that enrich your life and bring you wonderful things to learn. We love you so much. Yeah, and that's, I feel like it's like, it's like you're wearing your cloak differently. And that's the different perspective, right? That's the different perspective so deeply fascinating that is your reading for today though my daily creatives thank you so much for your watching and for your patience with me as i know this was a little delayed my energy has just been pretty scattered this week so um do forgive me and i i appreciate that uh that patience in advance um there are other ways you can connect on the channel so feel free to check that out if you wish but if this is where we part i hope that wherever this finds you on the time space continuum morning afternoon or night it finds you very very well my friends take care <laughs>